Hello everyone, welcome. It's Caleb here, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to use Git and GitHub for collaboration. So we're gonna be talking about branches as well as pull requests. And this ties in very closely with deploying applications. So first I'm going to show you an example of what can be done, and then we're gonna talk about how to do it ourselves. So if I go to another repo I have on here, we have this Flask practice, and I've been just working on some web development stuff, and if you wanna see this wonderful website, here it is. Now I know it could probably use a little bit of work considering we have grape soda on here three times, but the, the main point that I wanna show you about this video is that this is a website being developed on my local machine, but the end goal is to deploy this to some server. So I have this tied in with Amazon Web Services and ultimately I can deploy it to an actual web address. Now you could of course get a prettier web address, you know, calebsfavoritedrinks.com, but this will do for now. So when you do something like this, this deployment is tied to a specific branch in your repository. So to show you this, I'm going to make a change on my main branch locally, push it to GitHub, and these changes will propagate to my server on Amazon Web Services, and those changes will be seen here. So I'm going to change the name of this to Caleb's favorite drinks. And you can see these changes on my local machine, Caleb's favorite drinks. So what we can do now is we can add this to our commit. I'll just give it a simple message like title update. And then I'll say git push origin main. And there we go. Now taking a look at this repo here, you can find those changes. If you do a refresh, you can see 13 seconds ago we had this title update and just following through that it'll show you where those changes happened so title update is in templates and then again title update in layout so here's the file i changed caleb's favorite drinks and you can go ahead and see the history to see where that change was made and there we go so i got rid of favorite drinks and replaced it with caleb's favorite drinks so I'm not gonna talk a ton on deployment because I have other videos for deploying Node.js and Flask to Amazon Web Services, but to show you the process, basically it's going to notice that change on that main branch and it's going to deploy the software and it will automatically update the server to say Caleb's favorite drinks. Fantastic. So that was a pretty big intro. What exactly am I trying to tell you or show you? Well, this is all tied to my main branch. So whenever I push my main branch up to GitHub, it's going to propagate to this deployment server. But I might not want to do that for every single change I make to my code and commit. That could introduce potential bugs into our software if we didn't have enough time to test it and so forth. So a common setup is instead of just coding everything on your main branch, which is what we have here, you could actually create a new branch, such as a feature branch, where you do all of your development, you could even do some testing, and then once you're ready to deploy it, you can merge those changes into your main branch. So you can see this is part of main. And if we click this drop down, that's the only branch we have here. So that means I'm always developing on that main branch, which is really dangerous if I make a mistake and those changes get deployed into production without me realizing it. So this first aspect of branching, this is all for just you. The next aspect of what I wanted to talk about is forking and pull requests, which is a little bit different and we'll get to that here soon. So if I wanted to do branching for this application, all I would do is in the terminal for this repo, I would say git checkout hyphen B and then give it a name such as feature and hit enter, switch to a new branch feature. Now I can make changes in this branch. So for example, I could say something like drink rater, it doesn't really matter and I can say git status, and I can see that those changes are recognized, and it's also on branch feature. So that's what this here means. From here, we can commit this on our feature branch. So we'll say git add dot git commit update title work in progress, something like that. And now when we say git status, it says on branch feature, nothing to commit, working tree clean. Now, essentially our feature branch is one commit ahead of our main branch. And that's totally fine because we can eventually merge that into our main branch. So to switch branches, you can say git checkout and then the branch name. So git checkout main. And then 
it says switch to branch main, it refreshes this page and you can see that is no longer there. We could switch back by saying git checkout feature. It refreshes the page and it brings that title back. So you can switch between working on different things. So maybe you're in a situation where you are working on some feature, but then you have to fix some bug that is attached to the deployment. So you can say git checkout main, you can fix it in main and commit it. Those will be propagated to the deployment server. And then you can go back to working on your feature. So I'm switching back and forth. Maybe you get a little confused. Hey, what branch am I on? What, what branches do we have? What you can do is say git branch and it's going to list the different branches and say which one you are on. Now, if you wanna push all of your changes to GitHub, you could say git push hyphen hyphen all origin. Originally, you would say git push origin and then the branch. Here's how you can do all of that in one. So git push hyphen hyphen all origin. It does its things. And then it set our feature branch to point to the feature branch up in GitHub. So on GitHub, now when we do a refresh, we should be able to see two branches and we can go into that file that we were changing. Let's take a look at it. That was in templates layout. So here's the one on main where we have Caleb's favorite drinks and then we can switch it to the feature branch which has Caleb's favorite drinks drink rater. Now in our deployment software, this feature branch was not picked up and you can see that the last update here was 13 minutes ago from when we committed last time. So up in our deployment server, there is no changes in the actual title. Now you could have that feature branch attached to a different deployment server for you to do testing. And let's say you go through the code and you get it all approved and you're ready to merge that into your main branch. Here's how you do that. You go into your terminal and we're gonna say git branch and make sure we are on the main branch. So we'll say git checkout main. I'll say git branch again just to confirm that. And then you say git merge feature. And then we're now in our main branch, but we're going to have that title from the feature branch brought into it. So now we can say git push origin main, or you could do git push hyphen hyphen all origin, either one. Those changes are going to push up into GitHub. Taking a look at the repo, we can switch back to the main branch and see those changes here. That's also going to trigger a, an update on Amazon Web Services, so just now, and it's working on that deployment. All right, so our deployment is complete, and now we should see that show up in our deployment. So that was a lot of information, but you should be able to take those principles and apply them to whatever application you're working with. But now I wanted to talk about something else, which is pull requests, which is also related to forking. So I could have created a pull request. And basically, if you think about what the word is, a pull request, you're requesting someone to pull your code into the, the main code. So in that situation, I could look at those suggested changes and agree and then pull those changes in rather than just you just pushing those changes and it's instant. Now this is going to be very commonly tied with forks because with this example, or you know maybe my other GitHub examples, let's say I have this repository, this hello repository that I made in my previous Git, Git tutorial, you're not going to have right access to this. So in order for you to contribute changes to this, you're going to have to do a pull request. So a common setup for working with repositories that you do not have access to is you would first fork this. So this is my repo, so it's not gonna work exactly the same. So let's both work through an example of forking someone else's repo. We'll look up octocat slash spoon hyphen knife. And that'll bring you to this page here. And now we can hit fork on this repository and select your username. It's going to create this fork. If you want, you can go back to the original Octocat spoon knife and take a look at the different pull requests just to see how people are doing it. So for example, this person updated the readme.md file and he went from the branch called master to the master branch. So you could do that or you could work with other branches. So 
let's go ahead and take a look at the, the code by selecting code here. And you can see what branches there are. We have master, change the title, test branch. Let's go ahead and submit something to the master branch. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go to our version of this repo, the forked version, take this web address, and we're going to clone that locally. So we're currently in a folder already, so let's just see what path we're in. We're going to change up a directory, and now I am in my user folder. So what we can do is we can say git clone, and then just paste that web address, hit enter, and now there should be a spoon knife folder that you can change into. So cd spoon knife, and I'm going to open that as well in my editor. So open spoon knife. We can take a look at the readme.md file, and let's just make one small change, such as an exclamation mark. So in the terminal, we can say git status. We can see we modified the readme.md file and that we are on branch master. So what we can do now is we can say git add, git commit, change title, and then git push origin master. In this case, it's master because that is the name of the branch. You'll see master a lot and you also see main a lot. So we'll hit enter. So that's going to update our version of the repo. So we can go into the file, the readme.md file, and we can see that change with the extra exclamation mark. So now we can go back to spoon knife, the original. So from here, you can make a new pull request and we are given the option to compare across forks. We're going to compare the original being the Octocat version master. And then for this one, we're going to check our version, which is the fork comparing against master. So here's the changes. We added an exclamation mark and we'll go ahead and create a pull request. Make something really inspirational here and then hit create pull request. So this is the pull request. And now whoever owns this can pull this into their code if they so wish, which I'm not really sure they would want to do, but you know, that's how you make a pull request. Now in our local code, let me clear this out. What I wanna show you is that we have the concept of a, an upstream, which is where the original code comes from. So we can say git remote hyphen V, and this is going to list our different remotes. So these are both pointing to my repository. But you know, if someone were to update the original repository that we forked, we might wanna pull those changes into our local code. Now this concept of the original repository and pulling that code into our fork, this is known as an upstream and you can add one by saying git remote add upstream and then pasting the address of that repo. So let's go to this repo. And then paste that here. So now we can say git remote and we can see this upstream. From here, you can say git fetch upstream and that's going to pull everything from that repository to your local. So we pulled in this change the title branch as well as this test branch and also the master branch and these are in this upstream slash then the branch name. So when I say git branch, you can see master, you also have the option of saying git branch hyphen r and that's going to list all of your remote branches. And then the process to get the code from the upstream, you would first go to the branch you want. So git checkout, in this case, master. And it says already on master. And then git merge upstream master, which comes from right here. So the upstream master refers to the repository that we forked. And then origin refers to our forked repository. So this is the one from Octocat, and this one is on Caleb Curry. So hit enter here, and it says already up to date. So if there were changes, you would basically just repeat that process, git fetch upstream, and then git merge upstream 
master. I think that's all you would have to do. Obviously there's no changes, so I might be missing something, but I think that's will get you where you need to go. That way you can always be changing code that is the most up-to-date in your fork. And to simplify this whole process, you could ask for write access to the repository, and then you don't have to worry about forking and upstreams. You can just make a new branch and then push that branch into GitHub or merge it yourself if they are okay with that. Well, that was a lot. Hopefully it was helpful and not just a bunch of random information spewed at you. Thank you for watching. Again, check out the uh, intro GitHub video if you need a little bit more background.